I'm here with uh, Christina Russo, who is the Director for International Cooperation in the European Commission's Research and Innovation Department. And I'm going to be talking with Christina about the Horizon 2020 programme, about international cooperation, and about how researchers can get involved in the programme. Welcome, Christina. Thank you. First of all, tell me a little bit about this Horizon 2020 programme. So Horizon 2020 is the biggest multilateral collaborative research program in the world. It has a budget of 80 billion euros and a duration of seven years. The aim of Horizon 2020 is to reinforce the EU competitiveness and productivity through research and innovation and also to strengthen the EU's position in the world. It is based on three main pillars which relate to scientific excellence, industrial leadership and societal challenges. They f the focus on societal challenge challenges relate to issues like climate change, food security, uh, energy security and um, well-being, uh, demography. All uh, these problems that concern the citizens, that concern the society and for which we need to pool the research efforts in order to have an impact when tackling them. Christina, you're director for international cooperation. Why does the EU consider it so important and what are we doing about it? International cooperation is very important for research and innovation. As I said, Horizon 2020 aims at tackling the global societal challenges, problems that concern all of us, that concern all citizens. So by definition, we need to cooperate with our international partners in order to be able to tackle these prog problems. We need to get together the best exper expertise, the best know-how, the best researchers to work together, and of course also pooling uh, the funds uh, to, be, to have much more impact uh, in what we are doing. This is why international cooperation is a key element of Horizon 2020. It is a cross-cutting dimension of Horizon 2020, meaning that international cooperation is and should be present in all the aspects of Horizon 2020, which is fully open to the world. What approach are you taking to ensure the effectiveness of international cooperation in Horizon 2020? We have, uh, um, we have a strategy on international cooperation in research and innovation, which is aimed at focusing our efforts with uh, key strategic partner countries or regions on key strategic sectors. And uh, in line with the, with the strategy, we have an approach which is aimed, uh, for example, with our neighbours' countries to um, strengthen and focus much more on regional cooperation. With the developing countries, we focus much more on the needs of those countries related like to food security, water scarcity, in line with the EU's development uh, policy. And with the industrialised countries and emerging countries, we have a research which is much more focused on the link with productivity and enhancing competitiveness on subjects of mutual interest. I'd like to know what you mean by an international partner. An international partner is uh, one based in a country which is uh, neither an EU country nor a country associated to the EU framework programme Horizon 2020. There are in fact some countries which are associated to Horizon 2020 uh, with whom uh, we conclude in international agreements uh, and if you want they pay uh, to be part of it uh, and they are treated uh, as member states. But generally speaking, international partners so are all the uh, partners which are not EU countries, neither associated. If I am a European researcher putting together a consortium, can I include an international partner? Yes, of course, you can and you should. Horizon 2020, as I said, is open to the world, which means that any consortium on any topic can include an international partner, provided that the basic conditions are fulfilled and the basic conditions relate to the fact that you should have three research entities from the EU member states or associated countries. And will this international partner receive funding from Horizon 2020? But there, there is a difference according to the country. There are the countries with low GDP um, or low or medium per capita income, they are funded. The researchers from these countries are funded. They are about uh, 130 countries uh, and they are listed in the, in the annex of, the, um, of Horizon 2020 and uh, they are on the participant portal for Horizon 2020. So these countries are funded. 
And then there is uh, the situation whereby we have a reciprocal agreement, for example, in the case uh, with the USA in the sector of health, where there is a reciprocal funding. And then otherwise, all the other countries, they pay for their participation in Horizon 2020, apart from a specific situation where an exception can be foreseen if the participation of researchers from those countries is deemed essential for carrying out the project. Christina, are there other modalities for uh, engaging in international cooperation in Horizon 2020? Yes, indeed, there are. In addition to the general opening to which I referred earlier on, there is what we call targeted opening, meaning that uh, sometimes we do pre-identify in the work programs in, on some specific topics the uh, encouragement or requirement to work together with international partners. And then also there is a step forward further that uh, we go from time to time. It's when we agree with our international partner to coordinate our calls on specific flagship initiatives. This is what we call coordinated calls. And for example, we have a very, very good example now in the 2014 work program, which relates to the Transatlantic Ocean Research Initiative, for which the EU is putting 58 million of euros and the uh, USA, Canada also are putting a substantial amount of money. Why should partners from non-funded countries uh, participate? I mean, what's in it for them? It's not only a question of money. Horizon 2020, as I said, is the biggest multilateral collaborative research program in the world, and it is aimed at tackling global societal challenges. So for a researcher from a partner country, from a non-EU country, it's a unique opportunity to work together with the best researchers in the world in order to deal with the problem, with issues that are so big that can be dealt in a correct way, expecting an impact only by pulling together the best knowledge, the best expertise, and of course also the funds. So there is much more than money and uh, it's really a great opportunity that uh, we really hope that uh, researchers from outside Europe uh, will fully tap. How are proposals selected? Proposals are selected uh, accordingly to a very, very strict uh, peer review process by a panel of independent experts. I must say that uh, the, uh, the peer review process uh, which is carried out at the EU level for selecting uh, proposals uh, is considered at uh, the highest standards in the world. And uh, the criteria on which this uh, peer review process is based is excellence. Proposals are selected on the basis of scientific excellence. Experts are independent. They are not only from the EU. We do have and we do want to have even more experts from outside the EU. So I would encourage experts to sign in in the database for experts that is available on the Horizon 2020 portal. What about a young individual uh, researcher interested in developing a research career in Europe? Uh, what does uh, Horizon 2020 offer then? But Horizon 2020 offers really a great opportunity because in Horizon 2020 we have the Marie Slodowska Curie actions uh, which are known in the world and they give the possibility to researchers uh, to have grants uh, to study abroad and to study in Europe and these grants go from uh, um, PhD to postdoc. We have had many of them and uh, these are really very, very interesting opportunities that uh, we would like to promote even further in Horizon 2020. What about more established researchers? Uh, Horizon 2020 also offers a great opportunity for more established researchers to the European Research Council grants. These uh, grants, which are very generous but highly competitive, are offered uh, to researchers that want to establish a research team or to researchers that have more expertise in the field in which they are carrying out uh, research. They are grants that normally relate to frontier research, research in emerging fields, and they promote the multidisciplinarity of uh, research. Again, I have to stress that with the Marie Zlodowska Curie actions and with the European Research Council grants, the Horizon 2020 is a unique program which offers opportunities which are really difficult to match elsewhere in the world. Christina, is there any support uh, for an individual in another part of the world 
um, who might be interested in these mobility opportunities? Yes, indeed, also. Uh, we provide uh, support for individuals, for researchers uh, that uh, are interested in research possibilities existing in Europe. We have a system which is called Air Access Links, which uh, has officers in several uh, countries outside Europe, which provides all the information and all the necessary support for those researchers who are interested to come to do research in Europe. If a researcher in an international partner country is interested in participating in Horizon 2020, where do they start? How can they get in contact with partners in Europe? So first of all, we have a very, very well developed uh, a portal on Horizon 2020, the participant portal, which gives all the information on Horizon 2020. Of course, the first thing that a researcher has to do is to go to Horizon 2020 and to carefully analyze which are the fields in which he or she is interested. And this is done uh, uh, very, um, very um, research friendly, I must say, because there are functionalities in the participant portal that help to find out the research calls related to any other specific sector. And then secondly, of course, once you have identified the calls, you have to find a partner. So the researchers have to activate themselves in order to get in contact with partners in Europe, and eventually elsewhere in the world. And there also, I'm very pleased to say that uh, in the participant portal that we have developed, there is also a specific modalities for finding potential partners to participate to a call. So in a nutshell, Horizon 2020 is there. It gives great opportunities to increase research cooperation um, at the international level. And we also have the tool to the participant portal to have all the information and I really do hope that we will uh, um, achieve our objective which is increasing international cooperation in a strategic way for Europe and for the rest of the world. Christina, a unique programme. Thank you very much. Thank you.